Hello and welcome. My name is Smickles. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some Vanilla Dwarf Fortress version 0.43.05. I am actually going to start a new fortress. We're doing fortress mode here. Um, I'm going to retire this one for the time being and just see if they fare all right on their own. Hopefully I have given them enough stuff to do that. Uh, probably not. I don't have high hopes for them. But I'm playing Vanilla Dwarf Fortress rather than uh, one with a few mods and tile sets because I think the game has gotten to the point where it does well enough without those things. Uh, admittedly, there is a little bit of a barrier to entry with the, uh, the not having a tile set. But the thing is, a lot of the stuff that the, uh, the mods add in, like the, uh, the production controls and stuff, which really, really helped out, are actually, there's, you know, analogs of those in the game now. So that other that other fortress was gosh where was it in this world it was off over here somewhere i think where was it there was a little island out in the middle of one of these. Well, it's possible I have it zoomed in just a little too much. Yeah, that, that looks kind of good. But yeah, there was an island out in the middle of one of these that had a volcano on it. Which for some reason it's not being shown now, I remember it being very, very easy to spot out when I found it the first time. Oh well. I did want to kind of point that out. However, I don't want to spend all that much time on it. So what we'll do, instead of that, let's just pick out some Bot with hopefully some trees because <laughs> I've also often found it difficult to go without trees in the beginning. We'll do trees, river, shallow metal. It's got an aquifer. Do we want to deal with an aquifer? I don't know. This is metals, flex stone, and soil. What if we bring it down some? If I move the local down, we have all that stuff. No aquifer. Trees are sparse, though. I mean, that means there is some. Calm, moderate. It ought to be kind of easy if it... Oh well, I don't quite want to do the very beginning of the stream there, of the river, because they kind of, I don't know, flange out. And for just plopping down a place without, oh, there's baddies nearby, I guess, goblins, who, the livid plants, paints, the livid paints. Are they? No, they're to the north. Really, it seems like we ought to be part of the urn of charming. If we look at our elevation, it's relatively low and pretty darn flat. So we're not getting any cliffs out of here, but all right, let's just 
jump right into it. We'll embark. I do want to prepare carefully. So, I know I don't really need a miner, but it makes things faster, especially if we're in a really flat area and we just want to dig down. I'm pretty sure all that does is make the guy mine faster. Essentially what I want to do, I'm going to give most of these guys one primary thing to help improve some quality. Although actually, let's take a different tack to this. So in the past, I would usually give them a skill that would help improve the quality of some of the stuff there. So the main thing that I want to do now, I've just had this thought, is rather than give them one skill and then, you know, something like uh, proficiency and, you know, axe dwarf or something. I'll just actually do that primarily. So we'll make them axe man. Did I pick humans somehow? I didn't know that was even possible. Well, whatever. So we're going to give them skill with axes and where is it dodging that way when a fight comes they'll be more likely to survive and uh, so most of them will be just like that axes except for two of them. Two of them we are going to give skills in kind of a leadership position and a medical position. So this guy, he's, he's our chosen leader. What we want him really to be able to do I'm not quite seeing it here. We want him to be able to, yeah. We want him to be able to appraise stuff very well, and we want him, really that's the only skill that he needs, but I, I do kind of want him to be negotiator. Oh, now we're running into the thing. So what we'll do, we're, we've run out of points there, if you, if you notice. What we'll do is we'll come over to the items and we will we'll just take away some of these things. I'll make this stuff. Step ladder. Did I really choose humans somehow? This is so strange. I didn't I suppose we'll see. It says dwarves down there. I guess it's just the uh, you know, the society that we joined up in. They're weirdos. They have all kinds of strange things like step ladders and they don't call themselves axe dwarves. They call themselves axe men. Okay. And this guy we wanted to be our doctor. So he needs to be able to diagnose really well. And I mean at least kind of do the rest of this stuff. I got one more point. Mm, wound dressing. There you go. So we have our doctor, our leader, Zazit. What a name for our... Zazit is our, uh, our de facto leader. Okay, back over to the items. I want to try to get three quivers. I don't I don't think we need quivers, especially if we're going for axes. 
two miners, five axes. Okay. Dwarven wine. We've got to be dwarves. Why does... This is a weird society we've jumped into. I guess we're jumping out of since we're striking out on our own, huh? Okay. We've got a lot of points into this cloth stuff. I should be able, if we have pigtails, yeah, we have pigtails, I should be able to farm up some cloth fairly easily. Got a bit of food, a bit of drink. Now, I've got to get five axes, because that's our little army, little militia. And beyond that, I want one cat, so that they'll deal with little vermin. And then, I want chickens. Chickens for eggs. And they're really easy to take care of. You basically lock them in a room and go steal their eggs over the course of time. And stop stealing their eggs if you want them to actually propagate a bit. So, hen. Eight seems like a good number. And then one rooster. Hopefully the rooster doesn't die. That can happen, but we're keeping him inside. He's not likely to be attacked. And it's really easy to control their population. The cats, on the other hand, will breed like frickin' crazy. So we need to keep an eye on that if a stray male cat comes along. Do I want dogs, though? Dogs will have kind of that same problem where they're, the population of them can grow rapidly, but then we can train them make them well, I've got 160 points what else am I going to spend that on well it won't happen right away and we can keep an eye on it 16 a piece that's I could get a lot of them. let's look at some of the some of the items we could actually get in place of that. One other thing we could do is get some large animal that we'd butcher for food, kind of as backup. That sounds like a kind of a good idea to me. Since we're going to a place with sparse wood, we might want to take some more wood with us just in case. This is all wood in little air quotes because it's made out of mushrooms. You know what? Somebody's going to get some cherry. So we'll do that. We'll come over here. We'll bring along one, one cow. No, cows are expensive, aren't they? Well, a pig. That's what we want. Ah. We'll bring along a pig. Bacon and eggs, man. Bacon and eggs. And then just a stack of wood. Um, yeah, okay, and then one more random thing, one point, let's bring along some, sand or some blood, or honeybee goop, hamster blood, yes, hamster blood. Let's look at our fort name. 
wall oiled. That okay. I'll accept it, but that's an odd one. And our group the praised paddle. Okay, so apparently they're into pressing people up against walls and smacking them with a paddle. But we just have to accept it, I guess. <laughs> symbol here. It works. I don't know why the music pops on there. But let's embark. Actually get into playing a bit here. Right. Mountain homes. They've got to be dwarves. I don't know why I thought they were humans. They just had funny names for some of this stuff. just waste time. We could build right into the cliff face here. Um, cliff face if you even really call it that. We had to go up one. What's this red over here? No idea. Okay. Well, there would be plenty of places to pasture stuff. sand. We got plenty of sand, don't we? Now, we got a couple of levels that are a bit squirrely here. here. Build 
just a very utilitarian rectangle room there. And set them off with that. The other guys aren't really going to have much to do. I guess we'll tell them to gather some plants. There's another pear tree, right? No. That hurt. There's a pear tree. Okay, so I might, might be able to do something with pears. They're all idle, even though there's digging and plant gathering to do. So, J. these guys. The other guys are going to be carrying axes. So go to him. Z. So profession, tab, labor, mining. Let's go back to Grab a pick and run off over here. There they go. Everyone should have hauling on by default. I do see most people using Dwarf Therapist for labor management, which I suppose you can get a lot more efficient about it using something like that. But, you know, it's alright. It gets the job done over here just using the, the in-game in-game methods. It's a little squirrely sometimes, but because you can you can, you know, press J, look at the list of jobs, the people not doing anything. It's easy enough. People pick up skills well enough. I suppose also what I wanna do is move move the chickens inside by I'm not going to pasture them yet this will also move the uh, the people standing around doing nothing in there just by creating a meeting area pressing I designating a spot and then pressing M to say that it's a meeting area now all of them should kind of run down here start hanging in, hanging out in there blue-colored peasants, and then our two nobles over there. Which actually, let's press in to come to the noble screen and actually designate this guy as our chief medical dwarf. Until they're finished actually digging out that whole thing. So we got sand here. We're gonna have to put a good stone floor over top of this stuff. Uh, but this is actual loam. I mean, it's loam. It's still kind of, you know, it's not, it's not rock. We're gonna have to dig down for that. But this is just really just getting our stuff inside so that the, you know, kind of the more sentient little animals don't, uh, don't steal this stuff and it doesn't get rained on. Not that it really matters, but it feels better about getting it inside. We don't want it to be rained on. So this is just going to be a 
custom. So stockpiles, P, we're gonna do custom. So C, T to come and look in. And just turn like almost everything on. We don't wanna bring in corpses, refuse, stone. Good leather cloth. We don't want to bring the wood in. We're gonna, we're gonna leave the wood outside. Weapons. A lot of this stuff we don't even have, but this will be kind of our central repository for just it's everything. There's. I'm gonna set up a little network of stockpiles where. Oh look, there they go. They're all running off to grab this stuff. Network of stuff stockpiles where. Different things we'll pull from that stockpile, and uh, you know, it'll be the little base of operations for the whole stockpile system. And I might as well set up the, the wood stockpile, so PW, kind of just default settings for wood. Put this right, right out front. make it that big. That should be, what, 11 by 11? It's kind of the standard movement that it does. When you use shift. What I was saying, look at the jobs. Look, you can easily see there's these jobs done. I know, granted, there, there could be a lot you can improve upon this system, but it really does work well enough. You don't need to go so far into it as Dwarf Therapist, you know, third-party software. And... Though, granted, those guys do an amazing job. It's just... I think, really, the game has gotten to the point that it stands on its own a lot better now. So this will actually be where... We'll call it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please feel free to leave me a comment. Give me some feedback. I would appreciate it.